So talk to me about uh, what do you think is going to happen in the Senate with, with uh, the, climate and the bipartisan climate and clean energy bill? Well, I think we're going to have to wait and see in part what happens here in Copenhagen. I think this is going to set the table uh, when the Senate uh, comes back after the Christmas break. I think this issue will be able to get a lot more attention because they will have dealt with health care. But the fact is we have a tremendous resistance on the part of the fossil fuel industries to changing our energy patterns in the United States. This is going to be one heck of a battle. Uh, you think we're going to do it? You think there's going to be a climate bill in the spring? I do think there will be a climate bill in the spring, but it's only going to happen because Americans are going to demand that Congress vote, that the obstructionists in the Senate let the Senate vote. After all, that is what we pay them to do. We do not pay them to refuse to vote. We pay them to vote. And the American people are going to have to let their senators know that they expect this Congress to do the public's business, solve the nation's problems, and move forward to a new energy future. And you think the United States can sharply reduce emissions over the next few decades uh, and that that will be a good thing for our economy? I think it will be a very good thing for our economy, and I think it's going to be much easier than most people think. Describe, talk to me a little bit about why you think that. Because our economy at the moment has enormous amounts of carbon waste. Half of your utility bill every month, if you're an average American, goes to heat the great outdoors. Well, the great outdoors does not need to be heated. Uh, and particularly in the summer, when you heat the great outdoors, you just mean you have a higher air conditioning bill. So using all of the energy we use productively, getting the maximum amount of economic benefit, and using new technology to reduce the amount of fuel we need to get to work, for example, uh, with gasoline at four dollars a gallon, that's an awfully good deal. Uh, talk to me a bit about uh, uh, renewable energy. What, what do you think uh, the prospects are there? Well, we have enough wind and sun in the United States to replace all of our fossil fuel. We just need to build the network to harvest their power and bring it to, into our homes and our workplaces. And uh, talk to me about clean energy jobs. Uh, we spend between 350 and 700 billion dollars a year exporting jobs to places like the Middle East and Venezuela. Uh, if we spent that 350 to 700 billion dollars a year at home in the United States, we'd be generating tens of millions of new jobs. And uh, you know, you mentioned a bit about what other countries are doing. Uh, what happens if the U.S. doesn't pass the, the climate bill just on the economic front? Forget how bad it'll be for the climate. Uh, we're going to continue to fall behind. Uh, we're going to find that technologies invented in the United States are going to be commercialized first in China, then in India, then in Latin America. The United States will become a second-rate world econ economic power. Oh, and w one more thing. T talk to me about natural gas. I know you've been spending a lot of time in that area. Well, one of the interesting changes in our, uh, natu in our energy situation has been that we now understand that the United States, which has very little of the world's oil, actually has an enormous amount of the world's natural gas. So we have the opportunity to replace a very dirty fossil fuel coal with a much cleaner fossil fuel natural gas for the next 20 or 30 years, and that's going to make it even cheaper to decarbonize our economy. Now, you're a major environmental group. There's obviously a lot of concerns that have been raised about whether you can develop the, the shale gas, the unconventional gas, in environmentally responsible fashion. Can you, can you comment on that at all? Well, the fact is that if we don't have proper regulation and if we don't have proper government oversight, any industry will go amok. We have an enormous amount of pollution of our waterways currently that results from actually agriculture from cattle feeding operations, that's not necessary, that's the result of lousy government oversight. Uh, if we have lousy government oversight of natural gas, it'll be developed in a dirty way because the companies that want to do it the wrong way will get an advantage. So we need good government oversight, we need good regulation, but if we get good regulation, we can do this right. All right, well, thank you very much.